So if you are suffering with estrogen issues, testosterone disruption, progesterone issues, right? Acne, uh, reproductive issues, PCOS, uh, issues around your period, then you really have to start thinking about what role phthalates play. All right, when it comes to fast fashion, you're gonna get cheap clothes. As I mentioned, they're stylish, they're trendy. You can get them shipped to you at whatever time from wherever it is in the world, usually overseas, but there's a cost to it. Now, I wanna talk about this investigation. It was done last year and it was in Canada and it was, it was a marketplace investigation. And what they did was they looked into companies, AliExpress, Boohoo, Fashion Nova, Shein, Zaffle, Zulily. And now these companies are notorious for fast fashion websites. They're super popular and it's grown over the years. Fast fashion pages are heavily celebrity backed. If you're driving over here in California, you get on the highway, you'll see a Fashion Nova billboard and there'll be some celebrities on there, celebrity singers and rappers. And it's crazy for me how much celebrities have gotten or how much money they have to spend for sponsorships. But they've had billions in sales. The global fast fashion market reached a value of nearly $68 million in 2020. It's growing and for a reason. People like fast fashion, but the cost is in the materials and the exposures of which we and our children are coming across every single day when we're putting on these clothes. So in this investigation, they had a few pieces from all of these companies sent out to the lab and the lab tested them for very particular chemicals. And what we saw was that some of these companies had major red flags. The company Zaffel, AliExpress, and Shein had red, red flags, whereas Zulily, Boohoo, and Fashion Nova had no red flags. But regardless, that doesn't mean that all fast fashion is safe, right? Even the ones that have no red flags, because very easily these cheap materials are used, and because of that, we're exposed to a lot of chemicals. First of all, something they tested for was heavy metals. I spoke about heavy metals ad nauseum. We know what they do to the body. Things like lead, aluminum, arsenic, mercury, are being found across our food systems, but now we really have to talk about what our clothes are exposing us to. Now, these chemicals, not just heavy metals, but that I'm gonna talk about, are not always only limited to oral ingestion, like we think about food, but we can also inhale them. They also go through the skin. So let's open our minds more to understand that, yeah, a lot of these environmental exposures have multiple routes of exposure. So there was heavy metals found in some of these products. We know that they disrupt the production of energy in our body. We know that they have an affinity for the brain, for the liver, for the kidneys, so they can impair our detoxification mechanisms when our body's trying to detox those very things like heavy metals. So for us, we really have to be aware that heavy metals are like an atomic bomb in our system. They hit all of our organs. They have neurodegenerative effects, right? They have attention deficit effects. They have developmental issues. If you have issues getting pregnant, heavy metals should be at the forefront of so many of these conversations. And heavy metals were found in some of these clothes. What else? PFAS, right? PFAS are something that you expect to find in water. And it's something that if you have a good water filter, will take out the PFAS. But also these PFAS, forever chemicals, are a byproduct of the production process that are found in these clothes. Now we know they're connected to obesity, they're uh, connected to immune disorders, they disrupt our immune system, they're certainly connected to cancers and even reproductive disorders. So it's, it's wild to think that a lot of these questions that doctors ask, who's gonna ask, do you wear fast fashion? Is 90% of your closet fast fashion? But now we know if it is, or if you're choosing to give these to yourself, buy them for yourselves or for your children, we gotta start making shifts into something more sustainable and clean. Really one that was blowing up on a lot of these was phthalates. Now you may have heard me talk about these multiple times, but phthalates are a group of chemicals that are used to make plastics more durable. Now think about it. When you have these clothes, a lot of them utilize plastic. A lot of them are cheap plastic, but instead of them being stiff, they have to conform to the body because they're clothes. So what they do is they make plastic soft, right? They're malleable, they conform to the body. And because of that, they utilize it in fashion. So what are the effects of phthalates? 
Well, they have short half-lives. So unlike the PFAS that I just spoke about, which stay in our body 10, 15, 16 to 18 years, that's why they're called forever chemicals, PFAS, we actually pee out. Regardless, even if they have a short half-life of one, two, three days, we're still exposed to them so much that we can find them in people's bodies, just like BPA, almost at any given time. But they target mostly the endocrine or hormonal system. So if you are suffering with estrogen issues, testosterone disruption, progesterone issues, right, acne, uh, reproductive issues, PCOS, uh, issues around your period, then you really have to start thinking about what role phthalates play in your health as well as BPA? They have a negative effect on multiple organs, just like PFAS and heavy metals, right? They're non-discriminate. And they typically manifest down the road as failed pregnancies, child growth issues, skin, respiratory issues. And a lot of people complain about the smell of these clothes when they open it up. And I would actually challenge you, not all chemicals have smells, right? Heavy metals don't tend to have smells. Phthalates do. Um, BPA sometimes does, formaldehyde does. So when you open up these boxes or plastic, if it has a strong smell, you can almost guarantee that it's off-gassing these chemicals that are going to affect you. But it's not going to just be for that day. It's going to be for the life of the piece. So if you're wearing fast fashion and you're giving it to your kids, you know, I, I watched this video from Health Canada and there was a, a cute little purse made for children that was really high in phthalates, those plasticizers to make the, the, the purse malleable. But I mean, you put it, you give it to a little girl, at some point she might put it in her mouth, but still she's going to be touching it. It's, she's going to be rolling around, playing in it, and it's exposure. And we have to reduce exposure to reduce disease. And that bag that had the phthalates in it, super flexible, it was $13 and it was from Zaffle. There was another bag, a little red purse, I'm pretty sure that was targeted for kids from Shein. It had 50 times the limit for lead in Health Canada. So you have to think about how the kids are gonna be exposed to this. Again, it's not just oral, remember that. AliExpress has a raincoat, and what do raincoats do? They repel water. But the chemical that it repels water with is PFAS, just like Teflon, how it's water resistant or it's nonstick. It's the same idea. PFAS, if you've ever seen the movie Dark Waters, I would actually recommend you all watch it's a fantastic movie with Mark Ruffalo. PFAS are those forever chemicals that make us sick over time. It's not the things where you're exposed to PFAS and you go, ah, oh, I'm really not feeling good. It's 10 years later, I'm not feeling good, I can't have a baby. I'm not feeling good, I have cancer. I'm not feeling good, I've developed diabetes and chronic disease. It's because the, the culmination of these chemicals in our body over time. And that's the water repellent action of PFAS. One of the worst items was found from Xi'an and it was a trench coat that had 20 times higher the amount of lead than is allowed in Canada for children, right? And the raincoat was made for kids. AliExpress had a bib that had elevated levels of phthalates on, a high, on the high end of what Health Canada says is safe. Remember, and think about a bib, you know, that's, that's where food is falling, that's where kids are picking up the food, they're eating it. So the whole point of this knowledge bomb is for us to just think about where we're putting our dollar because it's voting. Whether consciously or subconsciously, where we put our money is voting for what we're agreeing and allowing. And these fast fashion companies will always look to the cheapest products, right, for the trendiest stuff to get to you products that on the surface look, wow, I saved $10, I saved 20, I even saved $30 on this. But remember, there's always a cost, if not to you, your children. So my recommendation is to stay away from the fast fashion. Look for alternatives that utilize materials that are organic or are not being sprayed with chemicals or not utilizing any chemicals to have a certain effect or secondhand or vintage shops, which I enjoy myself, uh, which is not fast fashion, more sustainable, more environmentally conscious, and really overall better for your health too. So check it out. You can look online yourself. You can type in the marketplace investigation of fast fashion. You can watch, they have about a 20 minute video that will really open your eyes. There's some good visuals and, and explore it yourself. If it's something that you wanna stay with, I would really limit it to the least amount of exposure. Mm -hmm.